Now, let's go over the period where you essentially broke away from the Church of Satan and formed the Temple of Said. Let's go into that now. Well, the Church of Satan, as I mentioned before, had um, a couple of features. One, it was very sincere about itself. It was not a, a hypocritical institution. It worshipped the devil, the Judeo-Christian Satan, but it understood this as a principle opposed to the randomness of non-conscious nature, which you might call the objective universe. This was a principle of individual consciousness apart from that totality of nature. So that totality of nature is what people would, what people uh, personalize as God or Jehovah or collectively as natural gods. And in ancient Egypt, they were known as the Neturu, uh, from which we get our modern word nature. So Satan, as we understood him, was the principle of consciousness opposed to this or distinct from it, which is how each of us is an independent, conscious individual who can look out at everything that surrounds us, have an opinion about it, take a stand about it, study it, and generally have a perspective concerning it. So that is how we understood uh, this principle of Satan. And if you were talking about sin, it was not that he was a uh, somebody who is evil. His sin was separateness, that he had broken away from being just simply a non-conscious part of this large universe and was now outside of it as a as a conscious entity. So that separateness was what we were uh, focusing on and worshiping. It, it had nothing to do with with uh, simplistic morality per se. And indeed, I would have to go on and say that the Church of Satan was actually intensely moral because we didn't come up with uh, excuses for bad behavior, such as the devil made me do it or or I was forced to or you know Certainly. something like that. We we always maintain this this position that you are completely responsible for every decision you make and every deed you do. And the only person who's going to be in the hot seat for it is not the devil or somebody else, but you. You know, so we we had, if anything, a very strict moral atmosphere in the Church of Satan that way. And as I mentioned earlier, our other stance had to do with hypocrisy, that uh, we felt that society generally had an overdose of hypocrisy and institutional religion also had an overdose of hypocrisy. So we were very adamant that we were going to be honest and sincere in the stances that we took. So what happened was that in 1975, Anton LaVey suddenly made a a decision, uh, which he announced to me and expected me to put in the newsletter, that uh, the degrees, the initiatory degrees of the Church of Satan were going to henceforth be available for cash contributions and donations, as well as personal achievement and attainment and study. And I went back to him and I said, "I, I think I misunderstood you here, you know, because you can't say that you could just buy a degree, I mean, uh, or buy the priesthood. And he said, well, that's exactly what I do want. I do want contributions uh, to the church, and I want to be able to um, award the priesthood and other degrees uh, in exchange for those. And I said, you can't do this. I said, this this puts a lie to everything that we're in. It makes a mockery of the priesthood. It makes a mockery of our integrity. And he said, basically, shut up and print it. Ooh, I, I said, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> I can't do that. <laughs> I said, I'm, if, if I, if that's the choice that you leave, I'm going to have to resign. And I did, and it caused me an enormous amount of shock and personal pain. And the details of all this, including all the correspondence at that time, is related in my book called The Church of Satan, which is a history of that institution. It's also, also in print. And the, to make a long story short, I told the, I, I told the church, um, generally what I was, why I was leaving. And almost everybody left with me and, um, together we formed the Temple of Set and continued it forward uh, as an organization of strict integrity, which it has remained ever since. Very, That's how the Temple of Set very, came to be founded. Very nice. And, you're, and the, the name mm-hmm. change, the name change came about because at the time, one of the problems that we had always run into was that the term Satan was, of course, a, an invention originally of Judeo-Christianity, going back to the original Hebrews. And it was, by definition, a negative term and an evil term. And despite the fact that we had put a positive interpretation on it, uh, 
in the tradition of people like you know, John Milton and Mark Twain and others who had who had focused on the heroism and the nobility of it, it still was sort of stuck as a negative term, as as a as, as symbolic of evil and badness. And despite the fact that we had worked against that, we were always sort of pushing uphill on that. So one of the things that we did in 1975 was to completely um, discard the entire Judeo-Christian iconography altogether and go back to ancient Egypt, where we found uh, set as the ancient Egyptian symbol of the same independence of spirit that we were interested in. So that's that's how the name changed and the context changed, and it's uh, it worked out uh, turned out very well because it enabled us to keep going forward without any of those having to deal with any of those old stereotypes. Understood. And were you able to ever hash things out with with Anton? No, unfortunately not. Um, It was a very, very shocking, a very unhappy and a very sad parting of ways for me. Um, I I, over the years, I occasionally would send him letters uh, in which I hoped that some kind of reconciliation might be possible. Um, I wanted him to be able to see what we were doing with the Temple of Set, that it was not not done as some kind of a power grab, but it was done simply as an act of preservation of principles. And uh, uh, I also, of course, that book that I referred to, The Church of Satan, which is another huge book. It's a two-volume book. It's about a thousand pages long, and again, about the size of a phone book, also available on Amazon. I started writing that as a comprehensive history of the church in about 1982, and I've been revising it and updating it since then until it reached its final form, which is the one published uh, today and available on Amazon. And uh, all the way along, I would send him copies of the current edition and say, if there's anything in here that you think is unfair or unjust or not representative of the truth, please let me know and I'll be happy to address it. And he never, he never did. Nor did Diane, his wife. Oh, well, that's, so, uh, that's terrible. Or, or Carlo or Zena, his daughters, for that matter. And many years later, when I became friends with uh, Zena again, um, she essentially ador- endorsed the book, said, "Yes, you know, everything in here is quite fair and quite correct, and you know, that's the way it was." So that's the that's uh, it. I, I had always sort of hoped, kind of wistfully, you know, that we might be able to reconcile somehow with Anton before he. Uh, uh, reached the end of his time here. Right. That just simply wasn't to be. It would have been a lot of fun if he could have attended one of our international gatherings, and been a guest speaker, and gotten an honorary membership, and gotten a standing ovation, and all that. Kind of one of my dreams. It just didn't happen. 